edifying to those who have a good ear and a heart to receive what the Spirit has to say to the church. Church, say amen. Amen. 1 John, chapter 3. Verse 1, Beloved, what kind of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Amen. Beloved, now ye are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as he, speaking of Christ, is pure. John was called a beloved disciple. It was he who laid his head upon the Lord's shoulder during the Lord's Supper and asked him who would betray him. He was also called the disciple whom the Lord loved. He said, Behold, what manner of love God has bestowed upon us. What graciousness, what mercy, what grace that we can even be called the sons of God. But he says, The world knoweth us not. The world doesn't know us because the world didn't know him. So you have to understand that. The world didn't know Christ. They didn't receive Christ. And therefore, they didn't receive the spirit that was in Christ, the Holy Spirit. Now we are filled with the Holy Spirit the spirit that was in Christ. And if the world didn't receive the spirit of God then, they're not receiving it now. So then if the world is receiving you, then you need to check what spirit you're on. Because it didn't receive Christ, and it didn't receive us. And John is saying, because they are true to the doctrine of Christ, he said the world does not know us because they didn't know him. The world does not recognize us because they did not recognize him. Then he says, Beloved, we are the sons of God, but it, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we do know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. The Bible teaches us that the, the persecutions and the trials and the tribulations that we have now cannot compare to the glory and the riches that will be bestowed upon us, with the blessings of God that we are looking forward to receive. But then he says this, every man that has his hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. The power of the mind is important. The way you think is important. Your thinking process can cleanse you, your thinking process can contaminate you. Mm -hmm. He says that every man that has his hope that when Christ comes back, uh, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those that have the hope and the thought of the Messiah returning to receive the church unto himself. Those who understand that the world is coming to an end and we're looking for the soon coming king. Every man that has this hope purifies himself. Every man that thinks on these things, that very thought purges them because they'll say to themselves, I would do this or I would do that, but because I know that it's coming Amen. and I have to be ready to meet him, Amen. I don't think I'll go that way. I may be yielding to this and yielding to that, that which is not right, but because I know that one day the Lord will be here, I think I'll stop doing those things that may cause me to miss out on God. I may have been done wrong and I'm angry. And, and, and maybe I want to take vengeance into my own hands. Or I feel as though people are taking me for weakness and I want to move against them, show them who I am. Uh, rail for rail. And I'm angry, but then I think about it. Well, I want to meet the Lord when he comes. I want to be like him. He said in his word, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I, 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 I shall repay. The very thought that I don't want to be caught with my guards down because the Lord is on his way back. 
I think I'll let my anger go. I think I'll forgive that I may be forgiven. Amen. I, I know I'm mad. I know I'm angry. But I, I think that I won't push the issue. Because this thought that he's coming. This thought that we have to see him face to face. I call it the big picture. When you look at the bigger picture. Why is it that you take abuse? Why is it that you take this? Why is it that you pass up opportunities when you can be or all that you want to be. Well, because in order to do certain things, I have to put aside my Christian-like character. Well, you get all you can get, do all you can do, but no, I look at the bigger picture. Christ is coming back. Amen. 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 And it's not worth losing my soul and not being ready to meet him when he comes. Why is it that you take all of this? Why is it that you don't strike back? Why is it that you just don't tell everybody off? Because I look at the bigger picture. I have a hope that purifies me. I have a hope that cleanses me and helps me to do the right thing. And that hope is that he's on his way back. And I want to be ready when he comes. And the scripture says that it says that whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. Whosoever committed sin transgress meaning you break the law, the laws of God. Sin, it, it, sin goes against the laws of God. That word committed means put to practice. Of course, when we sin, we break the law of God, but he's talking about those who make a practice out of sin. Those who choose to walk in the way of sin. All unrighteousness is sin. When we sin, we break the law of God. But John here is emphasizing those who make a practice of sin. You have some that teach once you've been saved, you can do what you want. Uh, you can lie, you can steal, you can sin, and still make it in because it's not based on your righteousness. But I, I tell you differ with you. Whosoever committed sin, practices sin, is a lawbreaker. And sin is a transgression of the law. And you know that he, Christ, was manifested. He came forth to take away our sins. Anybody hearing me? Amen. Christ came to take away our sins. That's why sometimes we try to tell you, listen, you don't have to do wrong. He came to take away our sins. And if he came to take away our sins and we've been filled with the Spirit of God in us, then the Spirit of God knows how to keep you from sin. He knows how to help you overcome sin. He came to take away our sins. And in him is no what church? In him is no what church? Uh, I, I, I hope somebody is really paying attention to this because we are supposed to be the body of what? Christ. If we're living in sin, guess what we're not? We're not in him. So it, it boils down to this. Either you love God or you love your sin more. Lord, help us not to get angry because we are chastised. He chastised, corrects those whom he loved. Help us not to get angry because he tries, because he has drowned our pigs. Anybody understand that? Pigs were an abomination to the, to the Jews. And during Jesus' ministry, he focused on Israel. But on a couple of occasions, he blessed Gentiles. On one occasion, he was led to go to an island. And he didn't mingle with the people because they were not Jewish. He simply stepped foot on the ground. That's when that man that had the legions of devils came running down the mountainside and bowed down before Jesus. And the demons cried out, we know who you are. These were pig farmers. Jesus cast the devil out and cast the demons and the man into 2,000 pigs. And the pigs ran and they drowned themselves by way of the demons. And when the people came and, and, the, and the farmers came and they saw that all their pigs were drowned, they asked Jesus to go. You need to go. They saw the man in his right mind. They weren't worried about the miracle. They were upset because they lost their pigs. Sometimes we get upset because we have to let go of our pigs. That which is against God is what that is illustrating. Our abomination. And man, sometimes we get mad and we overlook the miraculous power of God, but we're upset because he comes to deliver. And sometimes we're not ready to be delivered. 
He came to take away our sins. Understand that. And in him is no missing the mark. That's why when we seek God's face, he's direct. Sin means to miss the mark. When we seek his face, he's direct. No guessing in the direction of God. And, and, and he came to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Now, whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. The way this is spelled, that means whosoever abideth in Christ, whoever continues in him, does not continue in sin. Anybody hear me? And whosoever sinneth, meaning what? Make a practice of sin. You hear me? Are you listening to this? Yes, Amen. Whosoever abideth, that word there means continuous in him, sinning, does not continue in sin. Doesn't say they might never sin, but they don't make a practice of sin. And whosoever sinneth means makes a what? A practice of sin. Anybody hear me? Have what? Have not seen him, neither what? Now, how many times you say you speak it in tongues? They've been baptized. If you sin more than you live righteous, <coughs> if your main heartbeat and compassion is sin, if you have a hard time living right and an easy time sinning, you understand? For those who want to know what's practice sin, that's what's practice sin. Your first choice is to sin. You prefer to sin than live right. It's hard to live right, but it's easy for you to sin. You practice sin. Then you need to know you have neither seen him, neither do you know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as Christ is righteous. I know I'm a godly person. I know I love God, and God knows me. But listen, you're only righteous not because you're saved. <coughs> but because you live in it. You're godly, not because you sin, but because you walk in it. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're righteous because you are living righteous. You're not righteous because you say you are. Mm -hmm. And even though it is not by our righteousness we can enter into the kingdom, it is by the righteousness of Christ. But we walk upright showing the appreciation for his righteousness. Amen. Is anybody hearing me? So please don't make the mistake of thinking you sit in and living like a devil and then you come around and talk about, I know God is with me. God's not with you like that. As a matter of fact, it could be you don't even know him. Because if you practice in sin, you haven't seen him, neither do you know him. And he that committed sin is what, church? The devil. Is anybody reading this? Amen. He that practices sin is what? Is anybody reading this? Amen. Now this doesn't make the preacher preaching it self-righteous. It doesn't make the saint using it as a tool of testimony and witness self-righteous. It's just a fact. If you practice sin, and the wages of sin is death, you are the devil. Hello? You didn't say if you sin. But if you make a practice of sin, you remember what I said that, man? Your very thought is sin. You prefer to sin than live righteous. It's hard for you to do right, but it's easy for you to do wrong. You get upset when people interrupt your sin program. And when you have the opportunity to choose, you choose sin. Well, why do these people come to church? Well, they have a type of respect but not enough to give God glory and praise. Mm -hmm. But just have a respect and you'll get you into the kingdom. That's right. <clears throat> Listen, he that committed sin, is, is anybody hearing this? Amen. Is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. He came forth that he might destroy the works of the devil. He came forth to destroy the works of Satan in our lives and in the world. And then but once we become born again, we turn around and then put our hands back into the things of Satan and sin, that which Christ came to destroy. We're trying to tell him that his life sacrifice was no good. 
He came to destroy it, and yet we want to pick it up and enjoy it. He that committed sin, y'all better hear me. I don't care if it's your wife, your husband, your brother, your mother, your sister, you, granddaddy, grandmama, cousins, best friends. If they're practicing sin, they're the devil. Straight up, straight down. And if they're the devil, they serve another God. Then you need to be careful what you join yourself to and what you allow people to do in your presence. Whosoever is born of God does not, anybody read me? Whosoever is born of God does not, you don't practice sin. Something in you just won't let you. Didn't say you would never sin, but you surely don't practice sin. Whosoever is born of God does not practice sin. For his seed remaineth in you. And he cannot sin because he is what? My God, when you truly say you just can't get up and do wrong because at, at any given time, you can't do it. Now you may fall here and there, but you're going to get up and eventually it will come to thing because the seed of God, and which is put in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You get the real Holy Ghost and you are yielding to the Holy Ghost. You're going to walk away from sin. You're going to, I feel the virtue. Somebody received that. You're going to slowly overcome it. That will be constant changes in your life. It may not all happen overnight, but believe me, it's going to happen. Because you just cannot settle for sin, having dominion, power over you. Whosoever is born of God will not commit, meaning practice sin. You just can't do it. Because the Holy Ghost won't let you. And this, the children of God are manifested, and the children of what? So now, in this, we know who the children of God are and the children of the devil. Mm -hmm. Whosoever does not righteousness is what? Uh, children of the devil. Mm -hmm. Hello, saints. Mm -hmm. So you've got children of God and you have children of the devil. In the church, you've got children of God. Put it like this, in the assembly, and you have children of the devil. How do you know the difference? The children of God are going to strive to do righteous. But the children of the devil are going to do and practice ungodliness. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be called the child of the devil. Lord, help me to humble myself. The Bible says that if you argue, you fight, and you go through, it says whatever you do, you know, uh, uh, let not the sun go down on your wrath, be angry and sin not. And it says, don't glory. Don't lie on the truth. Just say you're wrong. I feel virtue. Just say you're wrong. Don't lie on the truth. Don't try to blaspheme the spirit of God. Because he that practices sin. I know it's a hard pill to swallow to wake up and say, you know, I thought about what that preacher said. The way I'm living. The way I'm going indicates that I'm of the devil. Now, if I'm not of the devil, but well then Lord, I need to change some things. And if you're not of the devil, guess what? Change is coming. You begin to overcome the things that easily beset you. One by one, you will overcome them and defeat these things. You see why I, I, I always teach you to be careful. Now you, you get upset. But listen, you get upset with me because I'm telling you, listen, you don't want to do that. You know, and everybody, well, I want to do this. I'm like, okay, but you understand now, if you keep walking in that pattern, the scripture is going to declare that you are a child of the devil. I keep feeling the virtue. You need to understand what I'm saying. And he that loveth not his brother is not of God. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one. And he slew his brother. And why did Cain slew Abel? Because his own words were evil, and his brother was righteous. Slain, Cain killed Abel, being inspired by the devil, because Cain was angry. Lord, help us who get mad because what we're doing is not right. 
and we strike out at others. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brother. He who loveth not his brother abideth his death. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby we love, hereby we, hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Amen? Amen. And we ought to lay down our lives for the who? Yes. Who laid down his life for us? Yes. Christ did, isn't that right? Amen. Yeah, but uh, the scripture calls it the love of God, because he's God manifested it. But whosoever hath this world's good and shut it up his bowls of compassion from him, uh, how do the love of God in him? That means if you got something and you see somebody have a need and you don't give it, how do you say you have the love of God? See, the love of God is just not loving in heart, it's loving in action too. My little children, let us not love the world, neither in tongue. Little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in what? truth, as I just said. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is what? Greater than our heart and knoweth all things. So you can walk around and do what you want. But if you're feeling convicted in what you're doing, if your heart condemns you in what you're doing, God is greater than your heart. He sees it and that's what he's going to judge you. You can say, I don't feel bad about it, don't bother me, but if you're convicted, you're going to get judged for it. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, love one another, as he gave us commandment, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He that keepeth the commandments of Christ dwells in Christ. And we know that we are in him by the Holy Ghost. But you've got to understand, the scripture makes it plain that it's only those that are led by the Holy Spirit shall be called the, the children of God. And the scripture also lets us know that it's possible to have tasted of the Holy Ghost and the powers of the world to come, and then you turn back because you're no longer being guided by the Spirit of God. You don't want to play with sin to the point whereby you get entangled therein. You don't want to fight off conviction. God doesn't mind us having things, it's just he does care about the way in which we go about getting them. Whatever you can get in sin, my God, you can get in righteousness except damnation. You want a loved one, you can get it in righteousness without the damnation. You need money, you can get it in righteousness without the damnation. You need a promotion, you can get it in righteousness without the damnation. You want to have fun, you can enjoy the presence of God and, 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 and some fun that uh, in this world without contradicting the scriptures, without damnation. You want to take a vacation, you can take a vacation in righteousness without damnation. You want to listen to music, you can listen to decent, good, godly music in righteousness without damnation. Whatever you can get in that world that leads you to hell, you can do in Christ and go into glory. What's the problem? Maybe it's because you don't want it God's way. You want to do it your way. <clears throat> well, beloved, behold, please pay close attention and appreciate the love that God has bestowed upon us. Please appreciate it. Because he didn't have to do it. And if you're practicing sin, you're already damned. You're already damned. And if you're practicing sin and you've got loved ones that you know practice sin, I mean what? They sin more than they live right. 
I'm telling you, you know right now you are walking as a child of the devil. And then you know that. And you deal with them accordingly. Let them know, you gotta come out of this. We've all been there. Let them know that this is not right. Purify yourself. Change your frame of thought. The Bible says, Peter said, think on those things that appear of good virtue. I believe with Peter, Peter Paul, of good virtue, of good report. The mind is powerful. Purify yourself. I feel a virtue. And have faith in God. And he will make a way. Give Lord a hand clap on Precious God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. I feel a virtue. Let's pray for one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus.